Hello, welcome. All right, good. Can anybody hear me all right? Yeah. Good. Well, um, hello, my name is uh, Bisser, and I'm happy to be at the Open, Open Info Summit for the first time. Uh, I'll be filling in with, uh, for Peter because unfortunately uh, he wasn't uh, uh, able to make it to the summit. Uh, and today I would like to talk to you about how we built our uh, third party CI for Cinder um, and Juju, and we'll be introducing Zool, Notepool, and Software Factory along the way. So traditionally, CI systems have taken on an advisory role. Uh, with people manually merging uh, changes. Uh, tests might fail, but a change can still be merged into the destination branch. Uh, with Zool, uh, only changes that, after being rebased on top of the destination branch uh, and past the defined test suits, are accepted. Uh, Zool itself communicates with Garrett or GitHub or GitLab to accept these changes. So uh, when a new change is uploaded to the code review system, Zool takes the change, applies it to the target branch, and runs the uh, check pipeline first. This pipeline is usually defined to run comparatively fast tests like unit tests and linting. Uh, running only these uh, tests at this stage uh, sometimes saves time since a change can go through several iterations before the reviewers deem it good enough for approval. Um, Zool is aware of the state of the change and when the change has gathered enough votes, it enqueues it to the gate pipeline. Uh, if the checks in this pipeline pass, Zool accepts the change. The gate pipeline can include uh, the same or different changes than the check pipeline and it can be used for running slower and more comprehensive tests like integration tests. Uh, Zoo connects to the event stream of a Garrett instance via SSH and listens for events like patch set, patch set created, comment added, uh, and new votes. Uh, when working with GitHub, it is advised to connect Zoo via a GitHub app uh, the GitHub app approach will also enable Zool to publish results via the GitHub Checks API. Uh, so when Zool decides to test a change, uh, it requests nodes from Notepool. Uh, Notepool includes drivers for different cloud providers, uh, and in our case, we use uh, the OpenStack one. It also supports using fixed nodes via the static driver. Uh, the static driver is used to provide Zool with um, pet-like instances um, in other virtualization systems or even bare metal uh, machines. So uh, Zool's jobs run Ansible playbooks and Zool can use Ansible resources like uh, roles from multiple repositories. The Zool project, for example, provides a Zool job uh, repository that includes roles for common things like ensuring Python and PIP are available on the test nodes. Uh, Zool can also override jobs and node sets from the upstream repositories. Uh, th this is not always done. Uh, sometimes you just need a small change uh, to a job in a certain way. Uh, this can include running uh, playbooks uh, before the uh, main playbook of, of the upstream job, uh, adding settings, uh, installing software as it is in our case. Uh, and you can also add jobs that run after the main one, uh, which collect extra logs uh, and do cleanup of resources. And so far, I've talked about uh, three separate tools that need to be configured and maintained, Zool, Notepool, Garrett. Uh, but this is beginning to look like a complex setup with moving parts. And 
Fortunately, a project called Software Factory can set all of these services up for you uh, and has more optional services available. So if Zool can be thought of as an alternative to other CI systems like Jenkins, then Software Factory could be thought of more or less uh, as an alternative to something like GitHub. So the main components that Software Factory installs are Garrett for code review, Zool for CI, NodePool, and the log server. And Software Factory can install and configure uh, optional services like text collaboration, visualization, and more. Uh, the components to be installed are defined in a YAML file. Uh, one of the benefits of using Software Factory is that you do not need to uh, learn how to configure all of these separate services um, individually. Uh, but a small downside to this is that you would, you're going to have to learn another way of configuring these services if you already know how to. Um, our configuration uh, resides in a single Git repository and Zool, Zool is configured to uh, run check and gate pipelines with tests on these repositories, uh, on, on this repository. Um, these test, tests make it harder, but not impossible, to introduce an error in Zool's configuration. Uh, the post pipeline in Software Factory setup for this repository reconfigures uh, Zool and applies the changes. So once up and running, uh, you will see Zool starting jobs whenever it detects new changes, new patch sets, or explicit requests through magic comments. Uh, if something goes wrong with the system, you can inspect the logs of uh, each service. Uh, I think the latest or the second to, to latest version of uh, Software Factory deploys uh, the services in Podman containers. Uh, and if jobs are failing, you can just check out the Ansible task summary and uh, output from the build. Uh, and the task outputs from the builds web page. So, the third party vendor CI, uh, large projects like OpenStack have projects like Cinder that can work with other software uh, or hardware. And sometimes it's not feasible to, to test all of these at one place uh, by one organization. Uh, for example, a specific hardware may not be available to everyone or it just might not be practical to collect all of these setups uh, at one place. Uh, a solution to this is to outsource some of the tests to the vendors of, of these systems, uh, the entities who want support of their systems to be part of the parent project. Uh, so for store pool, this is our storage backend driver in Cinder. Uh, the combination of job inheritance, playbook reuse, and the ability to subscribe for events on external Garrett instance uh, make it really easy to implement a third-party CI uh, system in, in, in Zool. Uh, our, our Zool is configured to listen for events from the upstream Cinder repository at opendev.org. Uh, and where the, when there is a new change, patch set, comment, etc., we run the jobs defined in our local zoo. Uh, our local jobs uh, inherit Tempest jobs from uh, upstream. Uh, and this means that we get the uh, Tempest dev stack set up for free and we only have to focus about how to um, integrate and how to install and how to add store pool to, to the setup. Uh, this includes installing the store pool client software and optionally applying patches to Cinder. Uh, we also define 
uh, the store posts in their backend for the test cloud by a few zoo configuration variables. Uh, our test results get reported back to uh, the Garrett at opendev.org. Uh, just a disclaimer, please make sure that you consult with OpenDev's third-party testing guide before starting out with building your own third-party CI. Um, you should contact OpenDev's third-party coordinators uh, as described in the guide so that they configure OpenDev's Garrett not to send emails when your third-party CI account starts leaving messages on the changes. Uh, we also use Zool for our Juju Cinder backend charm testing. Uh, the functional testing is done by a tool called Zaza. It first sets up through Juju a uh, ephemeral charmed OpenStack cloud uh, on which the tests are then run. Uh, Zaza can be configured to deploy specific version pairs of Ubuntu and OpenStack. Uh, for example, uh, OpenStack Asuri running on Ubuntu Foco. Uh, this definition, along with um, a lot more configuration for each stack component, is contained in a YAML file called a charm bundle. So Zaza runs end-to-end -end tests uh, on this OpenStack cloud, but our main focus is to, for this setup is to make sure that the charm itself is working as intended. So for example, if there is a failing test called uh, create cinder volume, we would expect it to catch issues with the charm itself and the way the charm has configured the store pool backend for cinder and assume that the CI for uh, the cinder backend driver will catch issues with the backend itself. Uh, so our Charm CI uh, relies less on reusing upstream zoo components like playbooks and jobs, uh, but it is an example of how you can define a lot of jobs with minimum boilerplate. Uh, our base Zaza job is called Zaza Functional, and there is a child job for every bundle we'd like to test. Uh, the only thing the child jobs set is the bundle variable. So the software itself, uh, the guide in OpenDev for third-party testing. Uh, and yeah, any questions? Yes. Um, I can tell you offline. <laughs> yeah. Would you recommend using Software Factory for other vendors who are setting up CIs or revitalizing the CI? Personally, yes. Um, I have opinions about the documentation, but the more and more I get into Software Factory, the more uh, the documentation makes sense. So it might be the case that it's just not focused on getting people on board, but more of like as a, as a reference. So it, it might need just to uh, be, be added some sections that are more newbie friendly or, uh, I haven't thought about it much, but uh, yeah, I've noticed that the documentation is Yeah, it's you, you. You learn something from it. You, it's for for me. I I like to to approach learning new things uh, practically. Uh, this means a lot of container destruction and creation. Uh, a lot of software factories that get set up and then get destroyed, um, just to test out little tweaks in in the configuration go to the documentation, uh, make sense of stuff, go back to the test setup, uh, you know. So for me, it's it iterative.
both for setting up a software factory and both for working with documentation. I didn't reach out to anyone. Uh, I just didn't think uh, I'd need to because it wasn't like I was struggling. Uh, it's more like that I need to take my time and uh, learn it. So, yeah. Right. Well, uh, software factory definitely makes sense uh, in this context to me. Uh, uh, to be honest, for me, uh, uh, Storepool has been using it since before uh, I came in. So um, I learned uh, about software factory from Storepool. But once I got into it, yeah, it's, it, it's a good choice. Right, well, uh, any more questions? Thank you very much for coming, and yeah.